Ici encore, il faut bien le dire, il subsiste une incertitude. Bien sûr, les fabricants s'entourent de toutes les précautions. On multiplie les analyses et les expériences sur les animaux. Pour le fabricant de produits alimentaires, c'est un surcroît de travail, une dépense supplémentaire, une perte de temps. Sommes-nous certains que tous les industriels de l'alimentation s'astreignent à une recherche aussi complète qu'elle devrait l'être avant de lancer un produit nouveau sur le marché The question is indeed unavoidable. If the regulatory process for chemicals is based on tests carried out by the industry, we must understand how that actually works. I've chosen the example of food additives, emulsifiers, preservatives, colorings, and sweeteners. These substances invaded our diets with the birth of the food processing industry that went hand in hand with the Green Revolution. Their potential danger has been known for 50 years. Un consommateur qui absorbe, par exemple, une petite quantité de colorant pendant euh, deux semaines, pendant deux mois, pendant un, un an et deux ans, peut n'avoir aucun effet nocif. Mais il faut prévoir que ces petites doses, longtemps répétées, répétées jour après jour, pendant toute une vie, peuvent parfois comporter des risques extrêmement insidieux et même parfois des risques irréversibles, car il y a certains colorants, par exemple, qui, au moins chez l'animal, se sont avérés capables de provoquer des proliférations malignes, c'est-à-dire le cancer. 300 food additives are allowed in Europe. Among them, aspartame, an artificial sweetener which we find in at least 6,000 everyday products, such as soft drinks, sugar-free products, tabletop sweeteners, chewing gum, but also in medicine. The story of aspartame is typical. We find all the techniques used by the industry to manipulate the regulatory process. Everything started in 1965, when a researcher from the pharmaceutical company G.D. Searle discovered the molecule by chance. Nine years later, the company submitted a pre-marketing approval request to the Food and Drug Administration. In 1981, the FDA approved the product under the name NutraSweet with an ADI of 50 milligrams. Do you think aspartame is safe? Yes, I do. You do? When the FDA established the ADI of aspartame, on which studies was it based? I mean, it was a soil studies submitted by the manufacturer? That's right. This is the heart of the problem. The tests submitted by Searle to obtain the homologation for aspartame were subject to heated debate in the 70s, ignited by John Olney, a neurologist, whom we see here giving a press conference in 1996. 15 years after aspartame was put on the market. The article we've just published that shows an increased incidence of brain tumors and an increased malignancy of brain tumors in uh, human populations in the United States starting about three years after aspartame was introduced. 